So I recently got a test done and I got to know that this uh, physician who I consulted after uh, she told me that um, you know why are you doing the ketogenic diet you shouldn't be doing it for over a month it makes you fat you know it uh, it will it will bring your cholesterol up you will die of a heart disease <laughs> Bro. <laughs> exactly. She's right. I, I, I'm gonna show this to that physician, okay? What's up, my man? Can you see me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. How are you? Uh, uh, nice to meet you, my friend. Nice to meet you too, man. What's up? What's going on? Nothing, man. I'm uh, I'm vlogging right now, so say what's up to my people. <laughs> hey, hi everyone. Uh, this is Sahil from India. Sahil. Sahil, Sahil tearing yeah. up the game over there in India, bro. <laughs> I'm excited to talk with you, man. Are you pumped for this? Yeah, man. Absolutely. I mean, as a matter of fact, you're the first person I found on YouTube uh, when I started my keto journey. And you know, awesome. it's uh, you know, regardless how topsy and turvy the journey has been for me, you have been like that one beacon of hope that I've had. You know, uh, to look. Awesome. Toward the end of the day, yeah, yeah. So well, I'm uh, proud of it, man. I like that fact because all I had to do was help you, and now you're out there helping other people. So that's awesome. Let me say goodbye to my people real quick. Sure, man. Yeah. Hey, hold on real quick. Hey, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, Sahil Baba. Okay, cool, guys. Listen, I'm gonna have this conversation with this gentleman right here, talking all things keto. I want to uh, put the link. In the description of my video, so you can go check out his YouTube channel and watch our conversation there. So I'll be right back. All right, sweet bro. Thanks, buddy. So uh, yeah. I'll I'll start off by introducing you a little bit to my viewers, uh, just in case if you don't uh, if you, they don't know you already. So this is Jason Vitrock. He is currently in Denver, Colorado, yeah. if I'm not wrong, and uh, he has been doing the ketogenic lifestyle for the last two years or so. And I have been personally following him for the last one year since I discovered keto. And uh, he has this thing called the um, uh, keto keto quest going on right now, right? So why, yeah, so why don't you tell us something about that? Because I think people over here find it really really interesting. Uh, what exactly you have going okay. on around with that? Yeah. I didn't know we were live right away. I wouldn't have. I I, I like started off with my vlog, but we're we're good, right? Yeah, we're yeah. Live, right? We're not live. We're not live. I'll be posting it later. Okay. All yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so keto quest, um, that is an ongoing transformation challenge. You know how people do like 30 day challenges and then like after that it's all over and done with. Um, I wanted to do something different where you just pay a little bit of money, $30 and you get a chance to upload a new picture every single month. And I just come out with new prizes every month. So it doesn't cost you any extra money. The, the, the focus is more on the lifestyle, on the journey, on staying strong uh, than it is on just getting quick results in 30 days. So it was, it was designed as a way to keep people going, uh, which is great. We had our very first one in January mm -hmm. and we had amazing transformations in 30 days. And uh, we're flying the winner to the Arnold Classic in Columbus, but it was really good because it was like, I didn't have to let a bunch of other people down by choosing winners. It was like, guys, keep going, and you got a chance to win a trip to Denver in February. So the whole thing kind of works out like that. And uh, we also sell uh, a success guide on that website as well, ketoquest.com. Mm -hmm. So yeah, things so are good, man. There's, uh, if I'm not wrong, there's a guide for beginners on your website as well. So uh, Wait, say that again? a guide for beginners, right? Yes, that's correct. It's called the Keto Success Guide. Keto Success Guide. So, uh, would you be doing a guide in the future that is for somebody who's already been on keto for a while now uh, and would like to get some kind of an advanced uh, outlook toward the keto diet from your side? No. Uh, not really? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no. Uh, listen, man, my mission in life is to, to, to help people get started. Mm -hmm. and then give them the tools they need to go like discover things on their own. I don't want to, you know, I think there's a lot of, I think that's very important. Um, find somebody like you, I got you started and yeah. then you took it off on your own and you adapted it to your own life and you made it work for yourself and you gotta, you know, allow people to do that. You don't want to, you don't want your hand to be held all through life, man. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no way to live. So, but there are other resources out there as well uh, who are smarter than me, like researchers and scientists who have written books and um, I, I would push people towards that kind of next level, higher understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. uh, Jason, uh, why don't you tell us something about uh, how you started with keto? Because I, I know you have told this a million times on your channel, uh, but let's, let's hear it from you over here as well, you know? Uh, so... 
long story short, I was in the fitness industry following the bro bodybuilder diet. You know, you need a bunch of carbs and no fats and a lot of protein. Uh, and then I found out that carbs make you fat, so I cut them out. They do. Mm -hmm. Bread, cereal, pasta, bagels, um, all starches and stuff, they, they make you fat. And every fitness competitor like myself knows that. And so we take them out when it comes time to prepare for shows and photo shoots and we want to get shredded. But the problem is when you take out carbs, just take out carbs, um, you have no energy. Like your body suffers completely. And, and I lived that miserable life for three or four years mm -hmm. of just low carb. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to always be low carb because I always had stuff coming up, like photo mm -hmm. shoots and video shoots. Anyways, then I started working with children who suffer from mental illness. It was there that I learned about the ketogenic diet. Um, they use the diet to help combat a lot of side effects. These are kids with schizophrenia, bipolar, cutters, who try to commit suicide. Uh, you name it, they had it. Um, and they all took a medication that made them gain a ton of weight, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So I was there to train them, but the doctors were putting them on a different diet. And, and, and so they told me about this diet and I was like blown away. I didn't believe it. I was like, y'all are crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw it work. And then I also, you know, tried it on myself shortly thereafter. And so that's how I found it. And back when I started three years ago, this, this never would have happened, bro. Like, no, <laughs> no, I didn't think, you know, it was only in the medical field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was only being used for that. It was not, there was no keto YouTubers out there, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so, Jason, I have this kind of a uh, doubt. I'm not sure, uh, you know, I, I haven't found anything out online about this. So, I have heard people saying that the ketogenic diet was created for epileptic people. But I do believe that it was already out there. It was just being used for epileptic people, right? So what do you have to say about that? Um, I, the research that I looked into says that it was designed in the 20s as a way to reduce seizures in children who have epilepsy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know who came up with the word ketogenic diet, what scientists. I mean, he needs some damn credit. So mm -hmm. we got to find out who he is. Yeah, totally. But I mean, I just think that people have been living in ketosis their whole lot. Like I think the ketogenic diet is like the natural way of eating from our ancestors hundreds of years ago, before the agricultural revolution, all that stuff. So I mean, I don't think the ketogenic diet is necessarily anything new. Mm -hmm. It's primal. Mm -hmm. It's and so I think somebody just said, "Hey, listen, um, let's try this approach out to try and help these kids with uh, epilepsy." Um, so I don't know if that helps answer your question, but. It does in a way, yeah. Uh, so uh, tell me, my man. So uh, where it came from? I know it works, and that's all I care about, bro. <laughs> even, even, even I know it works, and uh, take it from somebody who's come, who's coming from a, a diabetic background. Uh, I have actually reversed my type 2 diabetes with the ketogenic diet. My sugar level nice. used to be 175. Now it's 83, and I'm really proud of it because I took no yeah, medication yeah. whatsoever. And, That's uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, and I am targeting my uh, people. Uh, I am targeting people around me who can benefit in a similar way, so that I can, you know, tell them about it. Because you know, spreading the word far and wide is whatever we can do right now in today's time and through social hey, media. Yeah. Hey, diabetes in India. What part of India do you live in? Uh, I live in Bangalore. Uh, it's okay. it's it's practically the Silicon Valley of India. It's the IT hub of India. Uh, and I am 24 years right now. So it was like you you're know. You're, you're how old? 24. 24? 24. 24. Yo, uh, crazy enough, diabetes and obesity is on the rise, like almost more in India, I think, than the United States. It is, it is. Actually, we have a culture which, uh, you know, we have food that is centered around carbs and sweets and all that jazz, you know. <laughs> And yeah, it's like a, a very starch-based society, right? It is, it is, it is. So uh, we have like all our meals are uh, full of rice and, and things like flatbread. And uh, then we have to have a dessert with every meal. So I think, you know, yeah, over time... Dessert for every meal? With every meal, yeah. That's, that's our normal day, you know, three meals. It's like tradition. It's like tradition, yeah. So uh, okay. if, you, if you ever come to a tour to India or you find you know, yourself in a situation where you're sitting with an Indian and you're seeing what they're eating throughout the day, it would be uh, rice, it would be a couple of pulses with the rice, then there would be flatbread, there would be some sweet. For example, we have this thing called gulab jamun, if you've heard of it. It's this... Uh, what is it? It's, again? it's called gulab jamun. So it's like no. a... Uh, okay, it's like a... Um, it's, it's something round and it's very sweet. 
and it's like in sugar water it's like concentrated ah. sugar water all around it uh, and it's very very sweet it is laden with sugar so that's something that we like have very often in our diets and i think that is the reason why this obesity and the diabetes epidemic is you know surrounding us these days and it's what do they tell you about fat in your country uh like they scare you to death like they did here in the United States exactly like, exactly uh they so did. yeah they do they do i i i constantly uh, you know get my blood sugar tested because you know i can never be too careful with how i'm doing right so i recently got a test done and i got to know that this uh, physician who i consulted after uh, she told me that um, you know why are you doing the ketogenic diet you shouldn't be doing it for over a month it makes you fat you know it uh, it will it will bring your cholesterol up you will die of a heart disease hey, it makes you <laughs> Bro. <laughs> exactly. She's right. I, I, I'm gonna show this to that physician. Okay. <laughs> this is this She's is so yeah. This is how fat the ketogenic diet makes you and everything. I yeah. feel like shit. I look like shit. Yeah. And and when she said when she said that you know you shouldn't be doing it over a month because you know it uh, will make your profile go worse and everything. I told her that I'm being do, I'm, I've been doing it for over a year now. And then she looks at my profile and then she's like, oh damn. <laughs> you know, yeah. 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 Time to do some more research, lady. Yeah, exactly. And I, uh, yeah, and I recently even met a couple of people who are, you know, guiding other people regarding the ketogenic diet here in Bangalore itself. Uh, now they told me about uh, this meeting that they had with a couple of doctors, and they asked them that, you know, why don't you suggest the ketogenic diet to people who are diabetic when you know that there are, and these are people who know the benefits of the ketogenic diet, who believe in the ketogenic diet, but they still don't tell it to people. And the simple answer that they got was that, hey, how will we make money? Yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah. and, and yeah. that that kind of blows you away, thinking that, hey, uh, there are people who are doing good in this world, but then there are not enough of them. Hey, well, here's the reality of the situation. Uh, you're growing fast on social media. Mm -hmm. um, you have a chance to influence more people than those doctors do now in, in today's day and age. Do you know what I mean? I, like I do. Can, I do. Yeah. And that's the that's the cool part about it mm -hmm. is if they don't want it, if they if they can't hear it from their doctor, at least they have a chance to hear it from you. Mm -hmm. So, oh, uh, tell me one thing: what motivated you to start your uh, keto channel? To start your channel? To start my YouTube channel? Yeah. Um, I never, I didn't really start as wanting to be a YouTuber. Okay. I actually, so my wife was pregnant at, pregnant at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I ran out and bought like a $200 camera to film one video, okay. um, that I really, really, really wanted to film. Mm -hmm. And it was just me sitting in my dad's kitchen. Cause at mm -hmm. the time we just moved and I was staying at his place and, uh, I had to, I just wanted to share, let people know that like. You don't get fat because you eat too much food and you don't exercise enough. Mm -hmm. Like that's what most people in America believe that that they they have to starve themselves or run themselves into the ground at the gym in order to lose weight and people just give up hope. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to come on and say, listen, y'all, that's bullshit. Um, it's all hormonal. You have to keep blood sugar under control. You have to control insulin. It's not your fault. It's the types of foods that you're eating. Not that you're eating so much food, you're lazy and, and all the all the rest. Mm -hmm. And I showed a few things that I ate. So anyways, that was dick. And after I shot that video, I was like, back to my life. And I don't know how many views it'll get on YouTube. Um, right now, currently, it's got almost a million views, that one video. And it's uh, and so when I saw it start to go more and more, I was like, okay, well, I got to figure this stuff out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all of a sudden I became a YouTuber. Here we are now. And I think uh, you're doing a great job, buddy. You, you're, do, you're doing a great job. I mean, I, I know that you struggled after your uh, 4,000 kilo calorie challenge when you moved to Denver, right? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I know what kind of a struggle that is. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's been, life is like that. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's, you have to constantly prioritize things and you have to, uh, you know, it's just life, but I always came back. So mm -hmm. I would take these small little breaks just to kind of sort things out in my own personal life. It's very difficult doing from my, from what I do is I share my whole damn life with you. Mm -hmm. You you know you're like part of my family when you when you go watch my video. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes that can be burdensome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to show you you know the move to Denver or you know the, the my son was having a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm so really anyways, sorry there's about the that good, thing. there's the good and the bad with YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. very real platform. Mm -hmm. It's not like Instagram where you can just 
post a picture with this uh, a, a caption and then that's it mm-hmm. um, but it's extremely powerful in my opinion YouTube is the king of all social media mm-hmm. and uh, man I'm really sorry to hear about uh, Paxton I mean uh, how do you feel about it because you know it's it's really incredible to know that uh, you still you know motivated enough because if I was in your situation I would have I don't know crumbled down it's- to pieces you know yeah, it's very hard to do YouTube with a one and a half year old and, mm-hmm. and, and a six month old. Like it was extremely difficult to balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paxton is the man. Mm-hmm. He is uh, he is so awesome. It's like and, and one of the cool things about what I do on YouTube and how I approach YouTube mm-hmm. is like I, I, I film my son and I put him in a lot of my videos because mm-hmm. I know that one day my wife and I and him will be able to go back to those videos and see him like grow up. Mm -hmm. I'm also very careful in that regard too. Um, I know that my son is going to be of the age one day where he can turn back and be like, wonder what dad was like back in the day. Yeah. You know, or like his friends might see him on YouTube years Mm -hmm. from now and they can go back and that stuff lives forever. Exactly. And um, so, and and believe it or not, a lot of, a lot of the motivational t- talks and things that I give to people, I'm really actually giving it to my son, knowing that he's going to maybe watch it one day. Yeah. Um, and I, so I, I'm, I'm essentially, um, it's messed up, but I'm essentially talking to him, knowing that he'll get it down, he'll get the message down the road. In case one day he doesn't want to listen to me in person, I'll just make um, him watch one of my videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll create a playlist for you, man. You can just play the entire playlist to this guy. Uh, I mean, it's it's not uh, it's not very messed up in my opinion. I think it's really really uh, you know it's kind of motivating to know that you know what kind of a thought process goes behind your uh, you know video making. I mean, yeah. you you are telling your story to your son, and 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 the people out there who are following you are like your sons and daughters. You know, in a way. I mean, yeah. I just, want people, children, to, right? I just want people to know that I'm a normal dude. Uh-huh. Okay, like people people judge on appearance mm. as you. Do. I'm sure. I know. I know. You know. And so I get I get people a lot of times that are like, "Wow, everything he says makes sense," but like, look at him. He's a fitness model. It just must be easier for him, and he must have everything just like laid out in front of him. And I and that's not the truth. I struggle mm-hmm. just as much as you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I face challenges mm-hmm. all, very often. Mm-hmm. Staying keto all the time is not like the easiest thing in the world. Doing my job, you know, it's like. So I want to share that kind of stuff with you, just so you know I'm not some perfect dude. Exactly. I'm a guy that found the I'm a guy that found the answer, and I'm motivated to help give it to you. That's mm-hmm. that's what I am. Mm-hmm. I still face problems uh, all the damn time. So and, uh, I think I think the biggest problem is this uh, preconceived notions that people have. You know, uh, if I walk into a gym over here in India, uh, the first thing I see at any corner of the gym would be like a ripped guy standing standing in a place and there will be another guy who's kind of talking with him to know you know what does he do and the first question he'll ask this guy is hey man what protein do you take you know what supplements are you taking you know things like that I mean it's I I don't even know where to begin because the the, what they think is that okay if you have a good body or if you have achieved something in in life it would have been because of some miracle supplement you know it's it's yeah. not it's not necessarily true, right? It's it's not even. I, I don't know what to it's say. It's silly. It's, it's silly. silly. And it's listen, silly. I, you know, I'm in the supplement industry. Mm-hmm. Like I'm in, I'm in fitness. Like yeah. you know what I mean. Like yeah. I understand all that stuff, and I'm always very careful not to sell shit that people don't need. But there's always somebody willing to sell you whatever you know you think you need in order to get what they have, mm-hmm. and that's kind of bad. Uh, you don't need anything. Think yeah, about yeah. people and. And to build muscle, think about people in prison. Mm-hmm. They're jacked. They're jacked. I don't, yeah. know about, I don't know about in India, but here in the United <laughs> States, if you want to find dudes with the craziest physiques ever, go to prison. Mm-hmm. Go, mm-hmm. Walk, go look at those dudes. Yeah. They're, they're jacked, they're strong as hell, mm-hmm. and all they do is sit in a cell the size of my room here and do push ups and sit ups and pull ups, and, and they eat food, mm-hmm. and they, they're consistent because they don't have anything else to do with their mm-hmm. time. But that's all it takes is consistency and dedication and patience Mm -hmm. most people don't have patience Mm -hmm. like when you're in a jail cell I imagine you're forced to have patience Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. what it takes and some people are like hey man uh, I want to look like you I don't have any patience I don't have any damn time right now sell me something and you know I'll pay whatever for it Mm -hmm. Um, 
that's very big problem with steroids as well especially amongst younger kids mm -hmm. in the social media world nowadays mm -hmm. um, so protein powder is that's not I'm not worried about that I'm worried about the guy at the gym who shredded like me and a kid comes up and says hey what are you taking and he says steroids do you want some and that kid is gonna say yeah probably mm -hmm. you know that's the that's the scary part that's the with all of this yeah. anyways but <laughs> yeah, I digress. So uh, I have a question for you, Jason. So uh, let's say that you know Paxton starts talking tomorrow, okay? And he talks to you and he's like, uh, "Hey, Dad, you know what is the ketogenic diet?" So how will you explain it to him? Well, I would just I would let him know essentially. That, well, there's two aspects to it. First, you got to understand that carbohydrates are dangerous, and 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 that you got to get him to understand, you know, that carbs in a very simplified form why they are bad. They raise your blood sugar and cause your body to secrete a hormone called insulin. Insulin's the fat storage hormone. So you gotta keep the carbs down. You can eat green leafy vegetables, which are carbohydrates. If he was like, hey dad, what are carbs? I would tell them they're simply things that grow out of the ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get that question asked a lot. What are carbs? Well, they're all grown out of the ground. But sometimes, like wheat and stuff, it's all refined down. Mm -hmm. um, so you can eat carbs like vegetables that grow out of the ground those are good carbs the bad carbs are the sugar cereals pastas bagels i would get him to understand that those things need to be taken in moderation especially the sugar and then i would also get him to understand that fat is actually extremely healthy for you and that your body wants it mm -hmm. and that you want to choose good sources of it like olive oil avocados macadamia nuts cheese meat um, chicken, salmon, bacon, all those things. And I would make sure he did not have a fear of those things. Mm -hmm. I basically make sure he knew that he was better off eating the butter than the bread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and I would leave it at that. Uh, it's, it's, well, given his, his age, I, you know, I'm not about forcing anything on, on, on kids right mm -hmm. now. So, but that's how I would explain it. And I think even before that, I would just really emphasize like to, to cut out the processed foods for him. Like I would say, hey, listen, man, we got to go for some whole foods, foods that have one ingredient. It's an mm -hmm. avocado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, a, it's steak. Uh -huh. um, it's broccoli mm -hmm. instead of a lot of – because kids these days, man, they, they buy all these – they get all these packaged foods all the time. And you look at the ingredient label and – It'll blow your mind how much stuff's in there, man. Yeah. A lot more than just chicken. Yeah, man. So that's how I think that's how I would approach it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I have this question that I have been asking almost everyone I have been meeting in the past couple of days. So uh, if you had a chance to go back in time and you had to tell yourself that this is something that I have been doing wrong, or you have to like you know talk to yourself before you started the ketogenic diet, what will you say to yourself? You know. If I had to talk to myself before I started the ketogenic diet. Yeah. What advice will you give yourself? To the uh, man, that's a tough question. I don't know what advice I would give myself looking back before I started the ketogenic diet. I think I've taken all my own advice. I think <laughs> I, I I nailed it, bro. I don't know. I don't. I. I what advice would I give? Um. I think in the very – this is something I learned over time, but I think going back, I would have just said to myself, hey, listen, you got to respect the fact that there's more than one way to do the ketogenic diet and that people are going to try different approaches and there is no one right way to do the ketogenic diet and you must respect individuals you know, because there was a lot of like, should I have my protein here, take it down, how many grams of carbs should I have, should I increase my fat, keep it lower? all those things and I think in the very beginning I was looking for like the perfect manuscript for the ketogenic diet and mm -hmm. try and apply that to everybody mm -hmm. um, that's that was dangerous mm -hmm. um, especially when I was like coming out with my program and stuff it was like well if you didn't do it my way you were doing it the wrong way mm -hmm. um, and, and and I quickly realized that was the bad the bad approach it's not it's not good because you got to recognize everybody's different yeah so I learned that very quickly but I would like to have just told myself respect that fact right away um, all you can do is encourage people to to start the diet you must keep things simple you must set them up to and like your question earlier you got to set them up just mm -hmm. to find their own way mm -hmm. you want to just guide them not tell them you must do this mm -hmm. 
Uh, and so, yeah, I guess that would be it. Uh, Respect people's individual differences. Yeah, man. Uh, and, and be open-minded. And be open-minded about stuff. Yeah, true. That's you know, true. like, 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 go ahead. There's, there's no one way to do it correctly, you know, because everybody is different. Like, like you are way different than the person who's sitting right next to you, right? I, I like to yeah. say that, yeah. So everybody's different. Everything that they put in their body will have a different kind of an impact on everybody, right? In a very different manner. So there's just not one correct way to do the same thing. There are so many yeah, different the only approaches. Way you're gonna find out, the only way you're going to find out is to do, to try and experiment with yourself. Mm-hmm. You exactly. know, like I get kids all the guys all the time or girls all the time. Like, hey, where should my protein be? Mm-hmm. I recommend. That's why I recommend ranges now. Like mm-hmm. ten to twenty percent, ten to twenty percent protein is what I recommend. Okay. 10 to 20%, um, okay. And if somebody comes to me like, hey, I'm trying to build muscle. Can I put my protein up to twenty five or thirty percent? I don't say no. Okay. Because I recommend. Because I recommend ten to twenty percent. Mm-hmm. I say. Why don't you try it for two weeks and see what the results are? Okay. And, or, and you know, like you're you're not gonna know uh-huh. unless you try it and, uh-huh. and get the feedback. Run your own little experiment. You don't have to ask me for permission to raise your protein to twenty five percent. It's your body, mm-hmm. and you can just run that experiment. That's how I got to where I'm at, man. I ran thousands of experiments on my body. <laughs> my whole damn body's a science experiment, man. I test little things out here and there. And so that's that's being unique and trying to find what works for you and not just listening to what so-and-so over there said, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so, man, uh... Uh, like I told you earlier that I'm targeting people who are suffering from diabetes and you know want to uh, start keto as a lifestyle to remedy their sugar problem and whatever. So uh, what would your advice to somebody like that be? If somebody comes to you and says that, hey man, I'm diabetic and I want to start the ketogenic diet, but I am a little dicey because I'm not sure, you know, because that's the kind of... Well, well hey, here's the deal. Carbohydrates uh, lead to type 2 diabetes. So they do. there's the enemy. Mm-hmm. There's the enemy. The question is, do you want to fight the enemy or do you just want to give in and let the enemy continue to conquer your life? Mm-hmm. Period. Straight up. Like, do you want to fight this fight against carbs? They've gotten you to this place right now, but I'm going to give you a strategy to win this, this war. Mm-hmm. Do you want to take it or not? Because believe it or not, there's even type 2 diabetics who have gotten that point because they've eaten so many carbohydrates. Like, that's how you get type 2 diabetes. You spike your blood sugar. You spike insulin four or five times a day, and it's just like this, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And your pancreas just gives up, essentially, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, there's unfortunately, there are people who are type 2 diabetic, and they're not willing to give up the things that got them there. They're not willing to just say, fine, carbs are the enemy, I'll get rid of them. Mm-hmm. They'd, rather just, they'd rather just eat those carbs and take that medicine that that doctor is going to sell them. Mm-hmm. Exactly, man. Exactly, and I think it's because of the mass media. What kind of a message the mass media sends out? Uh, I mean, you know, you don't take your medication, you die. Yeah. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. It's uh. And it's like it's called. Here's the deal. Let food be thy medicine. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And, and, the, and no doctor ever wants to hear that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, do you? Do you? Uh, I think you follow this guy, Doctor Berg, right? Uh, yeah. 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 So, never spoken to him, but I know. Yeah. Yeah. So he uh, he shared this one uh, uh, line. I I would like to call it a phrase. Uh, so he said that today uh, modern medicine is always treating the symptom. It's never treating the cause. So it's like if yeah. you're diabetic, I'll give you a medicine that will bring your sugar down. But hey, I'm not treating the cause. So this might happen yeah, again. Yeah. Then you stop the medication, right? So yeah. yeah. Because to str- if you if you were to strike at the root of the problem, you got mm-hmm. nothing else to sell anymore. Exactly, man. Exactly, and it's it's very sad that's pretty, to know. Damn, that's pretty that, that's pretty sad, bro. Sad, yeah. It's it's very but sad. But hey, we're all every it's every man and woman for themselves in this world. So mm-hmm. that's all there is to it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. there's always you know there's suckers out there, and there's somebody willing to sell something to a sucker. So I mean, if you want to be a sucker, keep taking all that meds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and and the easy way. Mm-hmm. It's the easy way. Pop this pill. Mm-hmm. You know, if you the hard way is, but the more sustainable and the better off is change your damn diet. Yeah. Stop eating foods that are killing you. Yeah. Uh, choice is yours. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I would be really you know uh, happy if you can share what's happening with your sugar this war on sugar challenge right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you, they want sure. Yeah. I encourage I encourage anybody and everybody. 
who enjoys challenging themselves to try and give up sugar for 21 days, mm -hmm. even if you if, even if you start it and you fail after seven days, you'll be a better person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and man, I want to ask you why 21 days? Even if you do it for even if you do a one day war on sugar, uh -huh. you'll be a better person. Yeah. Tell me one thing, why exactly 21 days? Like uh, you did a 21 days yeah. calorie challenge and you did a 21 days uh, war on sugar challenge, right? So I mean the 21, the, the 21 days initially was like, okay, I did the 21 day 4,000 calorie challenge, uh -huh. so I gotta do 21 days of this now. Uh -huh. Like, you know, if I did 14 days, everybody would have called me out like, oh, you didn't do 21 like this, you know, so <laughs> that had a factor in it. Uh -huh. But it's, I think research has shown that you need at least 21 days to overcome an addiction. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it might I, be 28. It's either 21 or 28. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, and so that's kind of really why I was like, okay, like mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this for 21 days. Mm -hmm. That's why. I, but people that are just like, if you just walk up to the street on some in, in America and you tell somebody to cut sugar for 21 days, they're gonna make it one hour. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. They're 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 screwed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it's crazy how prevalent sugar is like even me as already a practitioner of the ketogenic diet i already cut sugar so i thought mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and i'm like this is going to be cake mm -hmm. and then you realize there's 60 different names for sugar yeah and so you start looking at ingredient labels which i never did mm -hmm. i just looked at like the protein percentage or the grams and all that stuff you know i never looked at ingredient labels mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i start looking and it's like yo there's sugar in my bacon Mm -hmm. There's sugar in my sausage. There's sugar in almost everything that I'm eating. It might yeah. be trace amounts, mm -hmm. but, but it's still there. those trace amounts add up, man. Yeah, yeah they do. And, they do. Uh, and so it's very alarming. Uh, and I'm getting it's, you know, things are um, things are getting easier now. But it was tough in the beginning. It's, it's, I'll tell you, the real tough part was the artificial sweeteners, uh -huh. the fake sugar. Yeah, the fake sugar. So that shit is. It was even in my toothpaste. Really? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. sugar alcohols. There was sugar alcohols in my toothpaste, and they're just everywhere. And I think mm -hmm. people abuse them, you know, because I'm taking away your sugar, so mm -hmm. here's some fake sugar to sell you. So oh. those were kind of difficult as well to to, to avoid. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started the ketogenic diet, I uh, got to know that you know I can eat a little bit of mayonnaise. And you know, I, I set on a mission to go to a grocery store and find out a mayonnaise that does not have sugar in it. And just guess what? I couldn't find a single brand over here which did not have sugar in it. It had sugar, some had fructose, uh, some had high fructose corn syrup if I'm not wrong. And so many different, dangerous, you know, I know, I know. Dangerous stuff. I know, I know. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's, uh, it's sad. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sugar is a drug, bro. Yeah. There's a documentary uh, on Netflix. If you haven't watched it already, it's called Fed Up. Have you have you watched yeah, it? Yeah, I have. I yeah. have. I yeah. don't remember everything about. I do remember watching that movie. Mm -hmm. So I think they mentioned something like, uh, you know, fat is basically the taste on your plate. So fat is yeah. what brings the taste on your plate, right? So if you remove the fat, because we have this uh, low fat industry going around, and they have to remove fat from a certain, you know, food item or something like that. And to add the taste back, they will have to definitely add something like sugar or something that is sweet because how will they attract people otherwise, right? And oh. that is why low fat products are, in my opinion, like the worst thing that you can put on your kitchen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. If you, if you walked into a grocery store in America, mm -hmm. like the word low fat mm -hmm. is on every single product on every single store shelf. Like yeah. there's a low fat version of literally everything you can buy. Wow. And and it's and crazy. Do you do you have a section that caters to the ketogenic way of eating? Uh, like high fat products? In a, in a mainstream grocery store? Yeah. No? Yeah, it's called the it's called the meat deli. The, the <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's it. In the cheese section. Uh, -huh. uh everything everything else is, is big business carbohydrate manufacturer selling mm -hmm. you, you know, macaroni and cheese mm -hmm. and pasta and mm -hmm. bagels and bread. Mm -hmm. You should see the bread aisle. Yeah. It's like, oh, excuse my language. It's yeah. like, it's like a mile long, mm -hmm. bro. Yeah. I, you know? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an idea for one of your vlogs that you might be doing in the future for the war on sugar thing. Yeah. 
so uh, according to the American Heart Association, I think you are supposed to consume 9 teaspoons of sugar in a day, right? That's 37.5 grams of added sugar that you can safely consume in a day. So uh, I tried, like I'm, I'm doing a video uh, where I am uh, showing people that what exactly are you eating throughout your breakfast, lunch, dinner in a, on a normal day. And this is how yeah. much sugar you have been consuming throughout the day. So, so far I have only reached till lunch and I, I already have around 40 grams of sugar on the list. So that's your morning juice, uh, this, these big brand, branded companies that you know uh, sell you their juices through these TV ads saying that hey it's very healthy because it has fiber which they by the way filter <laughs> out <laughs> and, and it has like tons and tons of sugar and uh, we have these uh, drinks called uh, buttermilk, uh, I think, do you guys have buttermilk over there? No? Okay, it's it's uh, it's kind of a staple over here. So even that has some trace amounts of sugar and, and whatever they are eating throughout the day, what they think is healthy, like cornflakes, right? Flavored cornflakes. Yeah, so everything, if you add all that up, it, it, it comes down to 40 grams of sugar just till lunch. And I think you did that in your first video, right? Uh, yeah, it's alarming. It's yeah. alarming. Yeah. I'm glad you're doing it. Uh -huh. It shows people, like... Yeah how messed up it is yeah, to yeah, yeah. sacrifice yourself to show people that like, yo, you know, you're getting way too much damn sugar. How's this look? It's like holding up a mirror in front of them. Yeah. Like, hey. Mm. What number you did know? you come to? I think you did a similar thing in your first video, right? Yeah, I did what? Uh, you did a, you did something very similar in your first video, no? Uh, yeah, where, I went, yeah, I went out and ate like the average American. Uh -huh. So what number did you come up to? Uh, 190, 190 grams of sugar <laughs> of, sh of sugar not even just carbohydrates yeah. it was it was around 300 grams of carbohydrates of which 192 grams came from sugar Damn. and all i had all i had was we have starbucks here you guys have starbucks where you live yeah yeah we do yeah yeah screw starbucks <laughs> had, I, I had starbucks uh -huh. um i had chick-fil-a you probably don't have chick-fil-a no, it's really. like this it's like a very popular um, chicken fast food restaurant, you know, chicken sandwich and fries okay, okay. and a Coke, okay. and a Coke, yeah, yeah. right? That's like probably what most Americans, mm -hmm. when they get off for lunch, they're mm -hmm. just going to trick the leg in the drive through. Mm -hmm. So I had that, um, I don't remember what else I ate. And ironically on that day, it was national pizza day in the United States. Just honest to God, irony. Uh -huh. Somebody texted me on that day and said, you're never going to believe this. Today is actually national pizza day. So every single American I apparently was trying to eat pizza on that day and it just highlighted my point brilliantly I was mm -hmm. like I couldn't have prayed for this to happen <laughs> um, and so it just put things into perspective and then the very next day I declared war on sugar and here we are right now still sugar is on its knees pleading for mercy right now mm -hmm. uh, I won't give it to it and I'll see this thing out so it's been a good experience so far yeah man and uh, Jason, I really appreciate uh, you taking out the time to, you know, uh, have this chat with me. And uh, yeah, uh, it's my it's my birthday in four days. So I'll be posting this on my birthday because I'm a huge fan of yours, by the way. Uh, if you couldn't notice all the, you know, nervous talking. <laughs> the, Happy birthday, bro. <laughs> uh, thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's exciting. I th why did you start YouTube? Uh, okay, so I actually had this channel uh, where I used to post uh, skits. Okay. Um, I, I, I had this hobby of making funny skits, which were like, you know, in my, in my opinion, funny. So I used to uh, post them on my YouTube channel. And uh, I think I got uh, this high sugar level around January 2017. And then I found your channel and, you know, I saw all the work that you have been doing. And, uh, you know, um, it's, it's like you it, it kind of... Jump in. No, I, it just, it, you know, it motivated me into yeah. um, into doing what you do yeah i i think i started like after four or five weeks that i was on keto and i was uh, how do i put it like you know so surprised in a, in a good way uh, how my sugar levels came down in just four weeks of time they came down from 175 to 115 in four weeks nice. of time yeah and i knew uh, at that point of time that i'm going to continue this for the rest of my life and yeah. i have to try to educate some people you know i i want to reach as far as i can and try to educate as many people as i can because i if i if i go and do a random street interview today and i ask 10 people that hey do you know what the ketogenic diet is despite of the fact that we have four major celebrities here in india who have lost a lot of weight through keto diet they still won't know what the keto diet is 
And, uh, well, that's an amazing. You know what I think? Yeah. I think that's an, that's an amazing opportunity for you, bro. <laughs> that's I what I think. I I'm like, know. dang, that's awesome, man. Like, you just—it's gonna be like fishing, bro. Just when you, know, you know, there's so many people out there that need it, so that's a good thing. It's, let me let me leave you with this, you know, in case you don't, if you know, remember this from this interview, okay, and never forget this. Yeah. A leader, a leader is a dealer in hope. Mm-hmm. Say it. A leader is a dealer in hope. Yes. Yeah. That's 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 strong, man. I'm gonna post it on my Instagram tomorrow. Good. A leader yeah. is a dealer in hope. A so leader. you are a hope. You are a hope dealer. People come to you because they just want hope. They need help. They want yeah. hope. They want. They want you to tell them that they can do it. That everything's gonna be good. Here's a strategy. You're strong enough to do it. I, you know, you give them hope because out of the people that you said on the on the street that didn't know what the ketogenic diet was there's a greater number of them who have no hope mm-hmm. i know man they they've completely they have completely given up mm-hmm. on themselves mm-hmm. 100% I know. so it's up to you to just give them hope mm-hmm. and you don't have to beat them over the head with science you don't have to get all technical you don't have to do any of that stuff your message is simple. Let me just give you hope. This is, you know, listen to me. I can help you out. And and if you if you remember that, a leader is a dealer in hope. You will. Uh, there's nobody that can stop you. Yeah, man. I, I try and to keep it simple, man. <laughs> I I try to keep it simple. So, yeah. You're a hope. You're a hope dealer. Hope dealer. <laughs> Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Jason, thank you so much for you know being here today. Uh, and if you couldn't like notice this, I am kind of having a nervous breakdown right now. Why? <laughs> man, I love you. It's like you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm one of your. <laughs> hey, we're brothers. We're brothers now, man. And yeah, I love man. you too, bro. You're you're. I I respect and admire anybody like yourself who is willing to go give other people hope mm-hmm. you're a serious you're a true leader man yeah. and i'm telling you this you know what's your what's your youtube following right now you just started out so you're, yeah you're, it's it's almost a thousand subscribers uh yeah yeah, but, yeah, yeah but, remember this time yeah remember this time because it's not it's gonna it's gonna go up a lot okay yeah. it's and, and 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 understand that i was where you were at too mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you put all this good work in and you're just like you know when am I going to hit a hundred thousand? Um, it will come. Stay persistent. You, you're doing such a good thing, man. I checked your channel out. You're killing it. Thank you are you. doing everything. You're, you're, I can just tell that you're following your passion, and I promise you that will pay off. YouTube's a very fickle game in the beginning. A lot of dreams get crushed because people want to come out of the gate and get millions of views. Stay patient. Just keep the content going. Get in front of as many people like me as you can. Um, and, and keep spreading hope. I saw one of your videos that you did, man, uh, just recently. I don't remember the title of it. It uh, was like a motivational like talk video. Yeah, man. Uh, I, uh... Like you were, just, you were just sick of it. You were just <laughs> fed up and you were just like, yo, let me just tell you how it is, everybody. Mm-hmm. That, that shit motivated the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. Come up with, get, get more of that stuff out. Get cool, more man. of that stuff. Get, yeah, get angry. It's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, man. It's cool. Because people are dying around you, mm-hmm. and they don't know why, and it's it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, so get upset about it, because mm-hmm. it is a tragedy. Mm-hmm. And your YouTube channel will grow. I'll see you at 100,000 subscribers soon. Thanks, bro. buddy. So, Thank you. Yeah, I'm just glad to be a part of, of your journey, and um, I respect you, brother. Thanks, man. And I respect the fact that you, again, uh, took out time to like you know do this. And I know it's, you know, you have a very busy schedule and with all the things that are going on in your life, in your life, right? I, I know it's very hard to take out time, but thank you so much, you know. Yeah, my pleasure. One more thing. I, yeah. I take out time for people that, I take out time for people that I know mm-hmm. will go help way more people out. You okay. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm more, I'm, I'm, I like helping people like you're coming on and talking to you and helping you out because... I know that you're going to go on and help a bunch of people out. So I'm kind of helping people out in your name. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm using, you to, I'm using you to help people out. So don't let me down. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I won't let you down. I, I promise you. Yeah. You won't, man. Anyway. You're, you're, you're awesome, bro. Anyway. So you too, man. that's it. Is yeah. that it? Yeah, man. Uh, right. So I think I, I would like, you know, really appreciate it if you, yeah. <laughs> if you stay in touch. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I would, I would yeah, like to like, like said. yeah, because I would like to get to know you as a person as well. Because I know you pretty well through your videos, but you know, yeah, the behind the scenes also. You get what I'm saying, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here anytime, bro. We can, mm-hmm. we can. Hey, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll start a GoFundMe to go send me to India. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, you. Uh, hey, my other guy, uh-huh. my other friend is there. Uh, Headbangers Kitchen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sahil Makija, right? I, I know him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do I talk to India's them. Yeah. Big, I know India is a big country. You probably don't live like down the street from each other, but. It'd be cool to all get together sometime. You know, sure, I'd be down. Man. Yeah, man. I want to see your beautiful country for sure. Talk to VAS, man. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll come down to like the other corner of the country to meet you if you're here in India. Have you ever been to the United States? Uh, no, not really. Never yeah. been out of India. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I might though. If I ever come to United States, I will definitely visit you in Denver. And, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Or anywhere you go, I'll come meet you there. <laughs> okay. Anywhere, bro. All right. Uh, yeah, but it's been an absolute pleasure, man. We're fam, so anything you need, I got your back, bro. Sure, man. And and say hi to Carly for me, yeah? I will, yeah, yeah I will. Yeah. I will. She's doing great. Yeah. I, that's, I appreciate that. Yeah, okay, man. All right, I'll, I'll talk to you later then. It's it's kind of like, you know, way past my bedtime now, so I'll... Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 hey, that's dedication, though, yeah. man. That's dedication. So yeah. I'll let you get some good sleep, man. Sure, man. Keep conquering it. Keep spreading hope. All okay, right. Man. Thank you, man. Namaste. All right. Yeah, cheers, brother. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you too. Bye.